Hi there, today we wanted to show you another video um, of a way you can apply our Dam at Dam sealer. Um, some of our previous vi videos showed um, situations with smaller dams. Um, one of the things that we stress uh, is that application and planning for getting the Dam at Dam sealer over your dam is really important. Um, so we would normally suggest a, a seed spreader with smaller dams. We have seen people use hand scoops but uh, we really want a nice even application of the product. So we've got a landowner today who's got uh, a couple of leaking dams. One of them is uh, just behind me on my right. Now this dam is actually quite full. Um, so you'd say, you know, what, why would you treat this dam? This is the ideal time to be applying the dam sealer to the dam. The water is at its highest point. Uh, so there's obvious telltale signs of, of water leaking through the dam. So rather than treat the entire dam, and a lot of people have really large dams, uh, an acre, two acre, and they say, look, this is going to be an expensive exercise. A good approach um, is to treat a localised area and through the base of your dam wall is, is generally what we suggest. So we've got the opportunity to do that today with a, a drone and I'll just show you how that works. Uh, this is a, an Agris um, T10, which is a smaller of the agricultural drones, but these are becoming more widespread. You'll probably find a, a local uh, pilot in your area who has the spreading system. It's designed for spraying, but it also has a spreading system for spreading granular products. Um, so we'll show you a demonstration of how it works, but the reason that we find the drone is so good is because it gives you nice even application over the surface as the rotors actually push down, the product is pushed straight into the water. Uh, whereas if you're applying from a little boat or you're wading out in, in shallow ponds, uh, it tends to sit on the surface for a period of time. And, and people do say, look, the polymer is floating, I've got this slime on the surface. But what you'll notice today, after application, there's almost no visible signs. The product goes straight down into the water, wets out, sinks to the bottom and attaches to the clay and the soil. We'll treat across the length of the dam wall. So we've basically measured back uh, a distance and we've said let's treat the most likely area that leaks are going to be which is across this dam wall. Um, if we wanted to we could extend application further up but uh, our advice is it's not really necessary you're spending more money than what you need and I think if we treat this area we're going to get good results and we'll be able to tell by looking at the telltale wet spots and water leaking down through the back of the dam. Um, we've got a dam behind which uh, isn't leaking, it's full. Um, so it shows that the soils generally in this area are pretty good, um, but there's a particular issue with this one that we're trying to resolve. So the, the other thing that we really recommend people do to try and gauge how bad their leaks are is to try and use some sort of stick or, or measure. Um, we showed you before down the back of the dam wall that there are actually wet spots, so it's obvious that it's leaking. This dam is quite full, there's been a lot of water in the catchment, so while there's still water flowing in, it's difficult to really determine what the losses are. But something as simple as a peg, um, so the owner here has actually just placed in a, a small peg and just marked uh, one centimetre bars on that peg. So what he is able to very easily do is just look at that every 24 hours and see where the levels drop to, to gauge how quickly or how slowly the dam is, is actually leaking. Most people will say, look, it's winter, uh, we're losing water, so it must be leaks. You still get evaporation, especially through wind. Um, wind can actually cause quite a bit of evaporation, a lot more than you would have thought. So it's, it's a little bit difficult to determine, uh, have you got evaporation, have you got leaks um, or a combination. Certainly in summer you'll actually get more evaporation due to the heat, um, but wind is also important as well. Um, this is uh, the bottom of the dam wall. It's totally obvious that there's leakage under the dam wall and this is probably one of the most common scenarios we see. So the way that should be constructed, a big trench through here, to get down deep into the natural ground and then basically bring up layers of clay soil and compact. If you had a dam that was draining straight down into porous soil, you, you'd look at treating the whole area of the dam. It's often good to look at a before and after scenario. So one of the things that's worthwhile is marking out where there might be wet spots or damp spots. So I've just got a couple of bamboo stakes and the areas that I can see that are actually 
got quite a bit of water or there's visible signs of water draining away. If I mark those spots, what we can do is come back after we've treated this area with dam sealer and make sure that these areas are drying up. And if these areas are drying up, then that's giving you confidence that you're actually sealing the leaks and the water is not pushing in under the dam wall. Okay, so we've completed the first dam with the drone and we've just moved over to the second dam on this property. This is a larger dam and it's certainly got a much larger dam wall. So the, the top of the dam wall is uh, up the top there. We've got more telltale signs here of leakage, but instead of leakage right at the base coming out underneath the bottom of the dam wall, we've actually got some spots where the water is actually leaking through uh, maybe a third of the way up the dam wall. So again, that suggests that by applying dam it across the, the dam wall, um, we're actually targeting the spots that are actually the sources of the leaks. In this um, catchment area here, we have a series of dams all the way down the hill. So when we discuss this with a landowner, um, what we've decided to do is to sort the problems with this dam first. This dam is actually further up the catchment. This leakage is feeding the bottom dam, so it's very difficult for us to tell exactly what's going on with this next dam. It's pretty much at full capacity. Sometimes it's hard to know exactly what the issues are um, that, that cause leaks, but one thing that we've spied up on the side of the dam there is some outcrops of sandstones, and that tends to suggest that there may be some very sandy, crumbly, uh, rocky soil through the, the base of this, um, and perhaps even some, some uh, rocky seams, some sandstone seams, which are notorious for, for causing leaks. 